beautiful nurses and i want to use this medium to say happy new year to everyone you are welcome back to unified husky youtube channel where we make husky as simple as possible remember your success is always our priority and today i will be demonstrating one of the skills in husky you know you need to familiarize yourself with all the skills in husky because you don't know the exact one you'll be given in the exam hall so as I said today, I'm going to be demonstrating one of the skills in OSCE, which is administration of intramuscular injection. But before I go on, my beautiful nurses, I want to just tell you that you should please click the like button, the subscribe button. And please, once you are done with this video, watching the video, kindly share this video. You can also leave your comments. If you click the like button and the subscribe button, you are encouraging us to upload more videos. Thank you. So as I said earlier today, I'm going to be demonstrating administration of intramuscular injection. The scenario I have today is a community scenario. So when you are given a scenario, kindly read very well the heading so that we know whether it is a community scenario, as in maybe you are going to visit the patient in or her house to administer the medication, or maybe the patient is on admission in the ward, which we call in hospital scenario. But for this case, it is a community scenario. And being a community scenario, there's not going to be a wristband. There's not going to be an allergy band, okay? And I want to give out this acronym that we can make use of once it comes to administration of any medication. Now, the acronym is NAP, NAP, and it must be done twice. The N stands for the, for the name of the patient as well as the date of birth. You compare it with what you have on your document because it is a community scenario, there's no wristband. The A stands for allergy and the P stands for pain. You need to ask your patient whether your patient is comfortable or is in pain at the moment. The very first time you are going to do NAP is the first time you are meeting with the patient. Then when you leave and you come back with the medication, the first thing you do again, please don't forget, it is very, very important, is to do your nap the second time. You must not forget to do that nap twice. The first time when you meet with the patient, the second time when you are back with the medication, before you administer that medication, please do your, confirm the identity of the patient once again by doing your nap. So, I'm going to start straight away. Thank you very much. Just follow along as I start the demonstration of administration of so, uh, intramuscular injection. I ensure that the room is safe as I approach my patient. I try to provide privacy by drawing the curtain. Then I follow WHO standard of hand hygiene to perform my hand hygiene by making use of gel. I apply an ample of gel on my hand and I rub my hand palm to palm, palm to the back of my hands with fingers interlaced, palm to palm with fingers interlaced, Back of the fingers with fingers interlocked, tips of the fingers, rotation of the thumb, and my wrist. I wait for my hand to dry for 30 seconds, then I approach my patient. Hello, um, my name is Bosse. I'm one of the community nurses sent here today to come and administer to you your due intramuscular injection. Can you please confirm to me your full name and your date of birth as I cross check with what I have on my documents? My name is Malcolm Hargraves. Your date of birth, please. 26 1943 Thank you very much. I have confirmed I'm with the right patient, Mr. Malcolm Hargraves. Date of birth, 26 1943 And your address is 2 Long Street, Northampton, NN27. Is that correct? Yes, nurse. Thank you very much. Is it okay if I call you Malcolm? Okay, nurse. All right. Thank you, Malcolm. So, Malcolm, as I said earlier on, I'm actually here today to administer to you your due intramuscular injection which is called hydroxocobalamin injection and uh, you are due for it at this time which is 10 hundred hour uh, malcolm do you have any allergy no no okay you, you don't you've got no allergy that's good to hear are you in pain at the moment are you comfortable yes no all right good to hear is it okay malcolm if i read the prescription chart with you it's okay all right i have the prescription chart with the name mr malcolm hargraves Two Long Street, Northampton, NN27 Hill, date of birth 26 9 1943. There is no documented allergy. And the medication is hydroxocobalamin, 1 milligram IM every three months. The prescriber names and signature is John Adams with GMC 431. 
I can see that this is legal and it is legible for me to administer. There is no signature across it and there is no date, no time. That means it's not been administered. Um, Malcolm, I do so balami. It is used to correct vitamin B12 deficiency. And uh, you know, when vitamin B12 deficiency is being corrected, your immune system will, will become stronger. You'll be able to boost your immune system. So it is actually used to to correct vitamin B12 deficiency, all right? However, it has its own side effects like uh, nausea, like a slight abdominal discomfort, and you might not experience any, okay? You, you might also notice that your stool is, uh, it, it, it has a change in, in its color. It's nothing to actually worry about. Is that all right? Okay, nurse. All right, so I uh, will step aside now to go and prepare the medication. But before I go on, the last time you had, have you had this medication before? Yes, nurse. All right. Can you remember the sites that the injection was uh, given to you through? Uh, left arm. Okay, it was administered to you through your left arm. All right. Is it okay if I make use of your right arm this time around? Okay, nurse. All right, thank you. I'm just going to perform my hand hygiene again. Then I'm going to examine the sites that I want to use for the administration of the medication. Is it okay if I touch your right arm, Malcolm? Okay, nurse. All right. I can assess the arm, and I can see that it is not swollen. There's no sign of inflammation. There's no sign of infection. I am happy to use the site. I perform my hand hygiene again. So, Malcolm, I will be leaving you for now to quickly go and gather the material that I'm going to use. In case you have any concern, Please give me a shout and I will be here as soon as I can. So I step aside from my patients and please, if you want to do a skill or demonstrate a skill, once you leave your patient's side to go and gather your materials, go for your apron first. The reason is because you might forget the apron at the end of the day. But if you have it at the back of your mind that you have to wear your apron first, even before you gather your materials, it will really save you from forgetting. Perform my hand hygiene again. You ensure that when you are performing the subsequent hand hygiene, you don't miss any of the steps. You don't really need to verbalize the subsequent one aside from the first one, but you must not miss any of the steps. So I'm going to gather my materials now. I have here with me my tray. Assessor, can you please confirm to me that this tray has been washed with soap and water within the last 24 hours? Yes. All right, thank you. So it's safe for me to use. However, I'm going to get a cleaner wipes. And I will be cleaning, I put on my glove first, and I'm going to clean the tray with a cleaner wipes. Put on my gloves. So, I open one of the cleaner wipes. I open it fully. Then I'm going to be cleaning my tray, clean the inside. Then I clean the outside and I trash this waste in the clinical waste bin. Then I'm going to assemble my materials. I'm going to need two mini syringe. I'm going to need two mini syringe, which is intact and hindered. Saying it is intact means it has not been previously used. It's not opened. It is ended. The expiry date is 2020. So please verbalize the expiry date. It's very important. I put it in my tray. I'm going to need what is called a blunt needle. This is my blunt needle. It is also called a loading needle. That the syringe doesn't come with a needle. It separates, the needle is separate. So I'm going to need one of these. It is entered. Expiry date is 2026. I'm happy to use it. I put it inside the tray. I'm going to need what is called a safety needle. This is my safety needle. It has different color. Anyone they want you to use in hospital will be provided for you. We have, it depends on, on the size of each. The green one is a different size as well as, um, as well as the blue one. So this is intact and it is in date. The expiry date is 2025. I'm happy to use it. I put it inside my tray. I'm going to need two alcohol wipes which is intact and in date, expiry date is 2024. I'm happy to use, I put it in my tray. I'm going to need two pieces of gauze, which is intact and in date as well. I put it inside my tray. And I'm going to need a pair of gloves. It is advisable that you go 
you put inside your tray more than one pair of gloves in case when you get your patient's side, maybe one of the gloves you know fall on the floor and you won't be able to use it so it's, it is safer to go with an extra glove but for this demonstration i'll be going with a pair of gloves which is intact and immediate as well i put it in my tray and i have with me my injection which is hydrosocobalamin injection one milligram per meal as uh, batch number is one two three four expiry date is 20 26 april i'm happy to use it i put it in my tray now before i leave my before i go to my patient's side i'm going to prepare i'm going to prepare the medication all right first this is my hydrosocobalamin and i'm going to clean it with one of the wipes I will be cleaning it with one of the alcohol wipes. I will be cleaning the top part, which is the peak part, for peak part, for thirty seconds, and I'm going to allow it to dry for thirty seconds. Assuming thirty seconds have passed, you verbalize it that way in husky. Assuming thirty seconds have passed, then I'm going to get one of the gauze, the dry gauze, to break the injection away from me. I'm, I will be breaking the injection away from me. Away from me means you break it. In a way that if it splash, if it splash away from you, it will it will not splash on your body. So I'm breaking it away from me. That's it, and I'm going to discard the broken part inside the sharp box, and I put the injection back inside my tray. I put it inside the sharp box. I'm going to be improvising for the sharp box. So I discard this inside the sharp box, and um, I'm going to open my syringe for the syringe you open it this way you know if you want to remove it you are going to remove the the damp parts not the, not the top parts which is the pig part that part is very important it must not be touched or else it will be contaminated so i just open it on top here and i put it inside my tray then my loading needle as well which is also called the blunt needle so when you open the blunt needle please which is this one don't use her, your hand to take it out of the wrap if you do that you are going to contaminate the top part which is the peak part it is very important please don't use your hand to to remove it now i've already opened this i'm going to get my two mil syringe i will be right inside the wrap you can see that i'm i'm only holding the uh, the damp part you are going to put the insert the syringe you insert the syringe if you insert the syringe and you want, you press it you press it down so that the needle will be firmly attached to the syringe you press it down and as you are pressing it down turn it towards your right so that the needle will be firmly attached to it and you can come out you know with the needle attached to the syringe then this part this um the cover part you are going to Open this wrap fully and let the cover part drop inside the tray for recapping later. Now, I get my injection and I'm going to withdraw 1 ml hydroxocobalamin. After withdrawing, you don't need to prime it first, okay? Because if you prime it first, when you are trying to do your recapping, you might accidentally press this place and the, the medication will be reduced. So you don't prime it until you recap your needle. So I'm going to recap the needle now. And for the recapping of the needle, uh, there is there, there is a, a very important way for you to make it easy for you to be able to recap the needle. This the, the tray has four sides. Make sure that the, the the cap is at the corner. Each or any of the corner, any of the four corners, so that by the time you want to do your recapping, I want to do my recapping now. You will be able to press it down to the corner, to in order for it to be well cooked. Now I've done my recapping using the scooping method, and uh, I'm going to prime my injection now. And assessor, can you please confirm to me that I have one mil of hydrosucobalamin injection? Yes. Thank you very much. So I'm going to detach the loading needle. I'm not touching the peak part. Please don't touch the peak part. You can hold it here. 
press it down and turn it to the left you know the first time we turn it to the right this time you press it down and turn it to the left then it will detach with the cover and i'm going to trash this i'm going to discard it inside the sharp box and I, i'm going to mount my my safety needle the same way i did that of the loading needle so i'm also being careful with the pick part so that it doesn't get contaminated so i'm attaching i'm attaching it now i press it down turn it to the right then i remove it from the wrap this place must be raised up so that it doesn't and um, press on the skin of the patients when the injection is being given so now i have with me one meal of hydrosocobalamin injection and i'm going to put it inside my tray okay with other things that i've already assembled inside and ensure that you go you put inside the tray the the, the ampoule or the vial of the of the medication it must be inside the tray it must you must go with it to your patient's side so i'm going to pack all my rubbish everything that has been that was used before i'm packing all my rubbish and i'm discarding them inside the clinical waste bin then i perform my hand hygiene again ensuring that I don't miss any of the seven steps. And I go back to my patient. I said, so I'm happy to continue with my apron because it is not visibly soiled. So I'm going back to my patient, I'm going back to my patient, I'm going back with my tray that contains the medication and every other thing I'm going to need. I'm going back with my documents, the paperwork, the scenario of the patient that I have with me. And I'm going back with what I improvise for with a um, sharp box. I just improvise for sharp box, sorry. So three things you need to go back with to the patient side. Now, assuming I'm back to my patient side, hello, Malcolm, I'm back. Are you still happy for me to give you the injection? Yes, no. Thank you very much, Malcolm. Before I go on, can you please confirm to me again your full name and your date of birth as I cross check with what I have on my documents? Malcolm Hargreaves. Yes, date of birth. 26-9-1943. Thank you very much. And it is documented that you don't have allergies, is that correct? Yes, nurse. Are you in pain at the moment or are you comfortable at the moment? I'm okay, nurse. All right. So you can see that I've done the nap the second time, which is very important, confirming the patient's identity. So Malcolm, um, I will be administering the medication to you and I perform my hand hygiene again. And remember, I've already assessed, I've examined the sites that I want to use to ensure that it is safe. So I'm going to be putting on my gloves. Malcolm, I will be cleaning the site, your right arm that I'm going to use first with alcohol wipes for 30 seconds. All right, and I'm going to allow it to dry for 30 seconds. Is that all right? Okay, nurse. I ensure that privacy is provided for my patients. And I'm going to be cleaning it now for 30 seconds and I'm going to allow it to dry for 30 seconds. Assuming 30 seconds have passed, so I will be giving you the injection now. I will be stretching the skin. I'm going to stretch the skin and I'm going to insert the needle at angle 90 degree. But before then, can you please take a deep breath? Then you breathe out for me as I insert the needle. Breathe out. Thank you. I'm inserting the needle now at angle 90 degree leaving about 1 cm of the needle exposed. For intramuscular injection, you must not insert the whole of the needle. Some parts, like 1 cm of the needle, must be, must be left, must be exposed. So you are not inserting the whole of the needle. Now, I've inserted it at angle 90 degree, and after stretching the skin, I'm going to withdraw back to see if there's back flow of blood. There's no back flow, back flow of blood, so I'm happy to give it. And then Malcolm, I will be giving you the injection using the, pot, the push and the pause technique. The push and the pause technique means you push, you pause, you push, you pause. This way, you pause. And I will be administering it within 10 seconds, okay? Now, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, done. And I'm going to leave the needle in place for another 10 seconds to allow maximum absorption of the medication assuming 10 seconds have passed i'm going to get my dry gauze and i'll be removing the needle and i'm going to i'm going to apply 
uh, a gentle pressure without massaging the sides and i will be activating my safety lock this is the safety lock you activate it you just raise it up and press it then it is already activated and i will be discarding it inside my sharp box however if you did not go or you did not remember or you couldn't go with your sharp box after activating the safety lock just put it inside the tray but verbalize that i don't have my safety lock here with me but when i'm done i'm going to access i'm going to ensure that i discard the used syringe and needle inside the sharp box so i'm removing the gauze now malcolm i can see that the side is not bleeding how do you feel now malcolm are you all right i'm okay now all right thank you very much i'm going to leave you for now malcolm to quickly go and document what i have given to you as well as to discard my rubbish but i will be back in the next 30 minutes to check on you however if you feel funny or you have any concern just give me a shout okay okay so please remember to verbalize that we will be back in the next 30 minutes to check on the patients for the effectiveness of the medication as well as likely side effects if you verbalize it and you are not able to go back to that patient because of time maybe time and uh, time happen to be against you you won't be penalized because you have already verbalized it. they know you are meant to go back but if there is still time after discarding your rubbish everything you have used and after performing your after documentation you can come back to the patient you just assume it is 30 minutes time and you come back to the patient so i'm leaving malcolm now and uh, i'm going to discard all my rubbish i'm going to document everything that i have given I'm, I'm i'm going to put my signature the date and the time i will look at the hampo or the var given to me to write the expiry, there is a place for me to write the expiry date of the medication. I'm going to write it as well as the batch number, and I will be I will be discarding the ampoule in the sharp box. Then I'm going to discard all my rubbish, discard all the rubbish, and I will ensure that the tray is clean. The same way I met it, you just verbalize it. I will ensure that the tray is clean. The same way I met it, in uh, in order to get it ready for another use then i'm going to remove my gloves and my apron as well so i have already discarded all my rubbish and assuming it is already 30 minutes time i will go back to my patients remember i've already finished with my documentation so i perform my hand hygiene again Hello, Malcolm. I'm back. I just want to check on you. How are you feeling now? Are you all right? Yes, nurse. Uh, good to hear. So, Malcolm, I will be leaving you for now. I believe you have your GP number with you, right? Yes, nurse. In case you have any concern or any question, don't forget, just ring your GP. And if you feel it's a case of an emergency, you need to call 111 or 999. So, I will be leaving you for now. Thank you very much, Malcolm, for your participation. Bye for now. So my beautiful nurses, that is all about administration of intramuscular injection. It is as simple as that. I decided to take my time so that so as to make it clear and so that we understand it very well. So it is very simple. All you need to do is to practice and practice, then you will be good to go. Please don't forget to click the like button, the subscribe button, and to share this video as well as to leave your comment. Thank you very much for watching. I want to say bye for now. See you next time. Bye.